westward into Bamiyan and northward up to the Karakoram range, where we find Buddhist coverings from the early Silk Roads in Central Asia that are dating from 2nd to 1st century BC. Gandhar has provided commendable services to the cause of the Buddhist religion, art, architecture and literature. In the era of its prosperity, many Buddhist pilgrims from the distant lands visited different Buddhist monasteries of the Gandhara in search of the Buddhist scriptures. British soldiers brought Mahabharata and the Ramayana into this side of the Indus during a military campaign, which resulted in developing this concept. The first scientific excavation at the site of the Thai was conducted by the curator of Peshawar Museum and Superintendent Archaeological Survey of India, Dr. D. B. Spooner, in 1907. Following the recommendations of the then Director General of Archaeology of India, Sir John Marshall, and the work was continued in the site till 1911, during which many priceless pieces of the Buddhist sculptures were recovered from this site. Towards the eastern end of this historic site, the main ruins of the monastery are situated, a bit lower than the crest of the hill on the ridge to the north. The ruins are about 500 feet above the plain. The ruins are scattered altogether in a mile from east to west along the peak. The monastic ruins of Thakpai are composed of a monastery, the main stupa, the court of many stupas, the assembly hall, the courtyard, the Court of Three Stupas, the Wall of Colossae, and the secular buildings. The enclosure of the monastery has its main entrance to the south. There was kept another entrance open to the extreme south behind the hills. Studying the foundation walls of the Tagbai has revealed that it was a strongly fortified town in its bright days. A renowned village of Sarai Bhalol is located just at a distance of two and a half miles on extensive mound from Tahtpai. That's why an entrance was kept on the extreme south. So the people from Sarai Bhalol used to come Tahtpai, crossing the hills, and they brought with them food and other offerings for the monks, nuns, and other staff members of the monastery. The court of many stupas lying on the southern side of the complex. This is a court of the many stupas of small sizes. The three sides of this court are attached to the lofty chapels and all these three sides are also connected to the courts of the monastery and the main stupa, which are lying at a higher ground than the court of the many stupas. The court of many stupas contains about 35 votive stupas, a dedication by the pilgrims to the monastery. These votive stupas were once adorned with the stucco pilaster, which was employed to decorate them with the narrative reliefs. Reliefs were surmounted by a cornice, while each relief was separated from the other with the help of a Korean pilaster. All this decoration has now been mostly vanished. All of these votive stupas have a square plinth except the two, of which one has a circular and the other has an octagon of length. It has eight ugi arches on each side for holding sculptures. On the east, north and south of this court are walls, some 25 to 30 feet high. These are the walls that contain about 30 chapels of different sizes, each one facing the court. The roof of these chapel has fallen. It's quite possible that the roof was more like a dome. They were once displaying the statue of Buddha. The area which is identified as a monastery of the secular structures located just to the north of the court of the many stupas. A flight of five steps provides access to it. During the course of excavations, not much sculptural remains were recovered from the monastery. This was previously expected due to the reason that the monastery is not naturally a portion of a convent where the recovery of the sculpture was to be expected. Just some fragments of the sculptures were recovered from this monastic quadrangle 
including a beautiful sculpture of Siddhartha that was in the pots. The monastic quadrangle is 62 feet square inside. It has some 15 cells on all of the three sides of it, which were meant to be used for the resting of the monks. Each cell was provided with a ventilator. Like all the Gandharan monasteries, this monastic quadrangle also contains a water tank in the southeastern corner. There are two schools of thoughts regarding this tank. One says that this tank was used to store the drainage of the cells, while the other says that it was probably used as a freshwater storage tank which was filled with the fresh water of the springs fetched by the monks. Lying just to the east of the monastery's court is the kitchen. The kitchen is a 20 feet square chamber. Towards the south, attached to it, is another square, which was the refectory of the kitchen. A flight of the nine steps was created to the north of the kitchen that was used to reach the upper story of the monastery. If this monastic quadrangle was a double-story building, the facility of accommodating the monks was also double. Moving toward the south, outside the monastery, there comes a flight of 15 steps that provides access to the court of the main stupa. Reaching inside the court, you will find a square platform in the center, which is the base of the lofty stupa. On the three sides of this court, chapels are available. To this square platform, from the northern side, a flight of steps is available that was once used by the monks to preambulate the stupa itself. Experts concluded that the full body of the main stupa would be 12 meters in diameter and more than 30 feet in height, including the basement. Each end of the side walls of the chapels towards the court was faced with a pilaster crowned by a rich Corinthian capital containing Akanta sleeves. Some of the chapels are smaller in size. Each chapel had a domical roof. These chapels once contained a single statue of Buddha campaigned by the auditors. The smaller chapels also had the statues of Buddha, while some had those of the saints or the kings, while the others had large scenes in alto relievo. Sculptures that were found from these chapels within the court of the main stupa are exceptionally classy. Cunningham is of the view that the statues in the chapel were gilded, while a few of them were painted red. He claimed of recovering a few pilaster statues having fragments of the gold leaf on them from Tahtpai. Slightly towards the northwest of the Stipa court, another quadrangle known as Assembly Hall is located. Gamhingham suggested that this hall is actually a place set apart for journal meetings of the Sangha organization. The monthly meetings related to the different tasks of the Sangha management were arranged in this hall. The walls of the assembly hall have small niches for keeping the oil lamps. The walls of the assembly hall have small niches for keeping the oil lamps. Another court, which is famous as the court of three stupas, is lying to the east of the court of main stupa. Beneath the court, in the western direction, runs the covered staircase. At the time of excavation, directly over the roof of this staircase, two small stupas, some 4 by 6 inches square, were discovered. They were ornamented in stucco with two friezes, each surmounted by a cornice. The one to the west was well preserved. It contained four decorated panels. To the south of the court of three stupas is a 17 by 8 feet wall, which extends from the arched doorway. At the base of this wall is found a common platform, on which six pairs of feet 
the remains of the colossal standing Buddha figures were found in situ. It leaves no doubt but that it was the wall that supported both the figures themselves and the painter who sheltered them from the effects of the weather. With this reference, this wall is called the Wall of Colossae. Each foot is two feet in length. Between these pairs of feet were found two small stucco Buddha figures. To the south of the assembly hall are the low-level chambers for the monks. In the beginning, it was thought that these were the underground chambers, but this idea was rejected later after the realization that these were lying low in comparison to the ground level of the other structures of the monastery. The roof of these chambers consists of the corbelled arches, 14 feet high. The entrances to these chambers are provided through the doorways. One is leading from the courtyard on the west and the entrance from the stairs on the south which leads to the central passage. The cells of the eastern side are darker with the small openings. There is no other source of natural light to enter inside these cells. The main purpose of providing insufficient light sources for these cells was to provide a suitable ambience for extreme meditation, asceticism, and seclusion where the monks could meditate with full concentration in these chambers. The courtyard in the west was also part of this building, as it was also used by the monks, who after a long session of meditation used to come to this court for fresh air and leisure time. Additional structures on the site may have served as residences or meeting halls or for secular purposes. All of the buildings on the site are constructed from local stone in Gandhara pattern using local dressed and semi. One questionable thing is the silence of the famous Chinese pilgrims who paid their visit to Gandhara during its prosperity, like Fahi and Hiwan Zhang. There does not come any reference of Dakhtai from the manuscripts of these travelers. The experts conclude that this might be because either this site was already abandoned before their arrival or they had no knowledge of it. The king of the barbaric tribe, Mihiragula, is charged with destroying the Buddhist monasteries and stupas lying across Gandhara. So they might have destroyed Dagbhai before the arrival of the Chinese pilgrims. Besides, after 280, Gandhara remained under the assault of the Sasanian kings of Iran. Secondly, the later rulers of Gandhara, like the powerful Hoshana kings, accepted fire worship under the influence of the Sasanians. This might also resulted in the devastation of the Buddhist sacred buildings as due to the religious conversion of the monarchs, these Buddhist monasteries lost their royal patronage.